Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about uh, some angle arc theorems that we've learned. These are more angle arc theorems that we learned in the prior section. And uh, just to go ahead and review those arc theorems before we move on to the practice problems. I have theorem 89. If two inscribed or tangent chord angles intercept the same arc, then they're congruent. So here I have the same arc AC. And then I know that angle B and D are congruent because they intercept the same arc and inscribed angles are going to be half the measure of their intercepted arc. Theorem 90, if two inscribed or tangent chord angles intercept congruent arcs of the same circle, then they are congruent. So here I have two congruent arcs AC and DFE. So I know that uh, DEF, angle DEF and angle B are going to be congruent because the inscribed angles or tangent chord angles are half the measure of the intercepted arc. And then 91, an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. Again, because I have my inscribed, inscribed angle C, it's going to be half the measure of the intercepted arc, which is a semicircle, so the inscribed angle is going to be uh, 90 degrees. Actually, one more for you, and that is the sum of the measures of a tangent, tangent angle in its minor arc is 180 degrees, and remember we solved that by uh, determining that the quadrilateral, a quadrilateral AOBC, has 360 degrees uh, for all of its interior angles. We know that angle OAC and OBC are both right angles because the radius to a tangent makes a right angle with the tangent. I have, again, two right angles. I subtract 180 degrees from 360, so I know that O, uh, excuse me, AOB, angle AOB and angle C are going to add up to the balance, or 180 degrees, and I know that uh, angle AOB, the central angle, is going to be equivalent in measure to the intercepted arc AB. Okay, so let's move on to the practice problems with that review, and I believe we have three of them. The first one, AB is a diameter of a circle, P. QR is equal to 6 is identified, AB is equal to 13, and QR is perpendicular to AB. So now we need to find out what RB is. So I identify RB as X, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from A to Q and then from Q to B. And I know that AQB is going to be a right angle, right, because this inscribed angle intercepts um, an arc which is a semicircle. So if the endpoints are endpoints of a uh, diameter, then I know that angle Q is going to be a right angle. So now I have my altitude on hypotenuse uh, theorem, which I can use. I know that 6 squared is going to be equal to x, or RB, times 13 minus x, or AR. So this is 13 minus x, which is AR. So I multiply these through, and I get 36 is equal to negative x squared plus 13x or x squared minus 13x plus 36 is equal to 0. I factor that quadratic. I get x minus 9 and x minus 4. So x can be 4 or it can be 9. However, it cannot be 9 because I know that the uh, radius is going to be 6 and a half. So the value of x has to be less than 6 and a half. PB is going to be 6 and a half. So if x ended up being 9, a portion of the radius would be larger than the radius itself, and that cannot be the case. So x ends up being equal to 4. All right, moving on to the next problem. I believe we have just two more. The last one's a little bit tricky, so we'll have to spend a couple more minutes on that one. Number 24, RHOM is a rhombus, so all the sides are going to be congruent. It's a parallelogram. I know that RH and RM are tangents, so these two... Uh, distances, of course, as a rhombus are going to be congruent. I need to find the measure of arc HM. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to identify HM, arc HM, as X. So HM is going to be equal to X. Now I'm going to figure out what angle R is. Angle R is going to be one half, if you remember our uh, angle measures for tangent tangent angle, one half the measure of HOM minus HM. So angle R is equal to one half the difference of uh, arc HOM minus HM. Right? We've defined HM as X, so I know that HOM is going to be 360 degrees 
minus x. So uh, this value angle r is 360 minus x, and then minus hm, which is x. So I have 360 degrees minus 2x, angle r is one half that measure, and it ends up being 180 minus x. So I identify angle r as a measure of 180 minus x degrees. And then I know that if uh, arc hm is x degrees, then I know the inscribed angle o is going to be half that measure. So HOM is one half x degrees. And I know that angle R and angle O are congruent because in a rhombus opposite, angles are congruent. So I can set uh, 180 minus x equal to one half x, angle R congruent to angle O. Uh, 180 x minus x is equal to one half x. Then I just solve for x and I end up with x is equal to 120 degrees. All right, moving on to the last problem. This one's a little bit tricky, so stick with me on this. Circle A is tangent to B, circle B, at this point R. PT is a common external tangent at P here and T here. Angle Q is 43 degrees. We want to find the measure of angle S. All right, so this is what's going to happen. I'm going to draw a line of centers from A to B, which goes through point R. Then I'm going to draw a line from B to Z, um, as I would do if I want to find my common external tangent. So if you recall from a prior lesson on finding uh, common external tangents, I draw a line which is parallel to PT. Um, and since APT is a right angle, again, because a radii to a tangent forms a right angle, I have PZB, which is also a right angle, and PTB, which is also a right angle. I end up with a rectangle in PZBT. All right, so if B, uh, PZB is a right angle, then I also know that BZA is a right angle. And I was given, uh, so now I have my triangle here, ZBA. And I'm going to step back a second. I, I was given that angle Q is 43 degrees, so that means uh, arc PR is also 43 degrees. Uh, angle PAR, therefore, as a central angle is going to be, I'm sorry, PR is going to be twice that amount, so PR is going to be 86 degrees, and I even wrote that down here. So uh, central angle PAR is also going to be 86 degrees. Well, I know if angle PAR is 86 degrees, and angle a Z B is 90 degrees as indicated in blue, then the balance left over for Z B A will be 4 degrees. Now I also know that T B Z is 90 degrees as part of my rectangle P Z B T. So I know that the angle, center angle T B A is 94 degrees, or T R, arc T R, is going to be equal to 94 degrees. Well, angle TSR, or angle S, is an inscribed angle. It's going to be half of the measure of uh, arc TR. So TSR, or angle S, ends up being 47 degrees. So once again, we start with this problem. Uh, we have common tangent. We know an inscribed angle. Uh, we have two centers of two different circles that are tangent at point R. And then we draw uh, a radius from P to A, a radius from T to B. We create our rectangle PZBT. We figure out that ZB is going to be the same length as PT, although it's not necessary for this particular problem. We figure out that PR, arc PR, is 86 degrees, or half the measure of Q. I'm sorry, twice the measure of Q, the inscribed angle. Um, at 86 degrees, that means the central angle A is also 86 degrees, which leaves us with our balance of 4 degrees for the balance of the triangle ZBA. Um, as ZBA is 4 degrees, I add that to TBZ to get 94 degrees as a central angle. That means TR as an arc is also 94 degrees. TSR, therefore, is half of TR, or 47 degrees. All right, that's it for Otten Math and uh, more angle arc theorems. Please come and join us for the next edition of Otten Math.